This is Michael Popak, Legal AF. We now know why Donald Trump's lawyer, Todd Blanche, looks so unhappy during the zoom in by him and Donald Trump to set the trial date in the Stormy Daniels hush money cover up crime up in New York when Judge Mershon set the trial date for March uh, of 2024. We saw on the, on the zoom in a very unhappy Todd Blanche, never really understood why. And even reporting at the time that Donald Trump with the mic off turned to the lawyer next to him, which was Todd Blanche and said something. But now we know from new reporting by Jonathan Carl of ABC News, who just wrote his third book in the Trump trilogy, this one called Tired of Winning, what happened? What happened is when um, Donald Trump never expected that the trial would be set right in the middle of primary season. This is well before Judge Chutkin in the D.C. election interference case in the federal court has taken now November for her own, for her own case. This is way back when Donald Trump had the fantasy that he'd never have a trial during the primary season, certainly before voters had a vote for him in November of 2024. And so he he didn't even bother going to the New York hearing. Uh, the lawyers in the room were Joe Tacopina, remember him? We don't see him anymore. For Donald Trump, who was also busy doing the and losing the E. Jean Carroll uh, rape and defamation case for Donald Trump, Boris Epstein, who is co conspirator number five or number six in the indictment in the D.C. election case, was in the room. Alina Haba was there and all that. But it and uh, but the lawyer sitting next to Donald Trump, and we'll show that picture again uh, during the zoom in by Donald Trump, who phoned it in during the trial date setting hearing was Todd Blanche. He had just recently left his law firm to go represent, he was at a big law firm, like one that I used to practice in, an AMLAW 20 law firm, American Lawyer 20 ranked law firm. He went off on his own to represent one client, Donald Trump. Chris Keist, by the way, did the exact same thing, left his law firm and also represents just really Donald Trump at the moment. And so we saw this face like, it's because he's probably the most, Todd Blanche, the most established criminal defense lawyer that they had attached to the Trump uh, defense at that moment. He was brought in, by the way, by Boris Epstein as the as we continue this incestuous set of relationships between Donald Trump and 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 uh, Boris Epstein. So Todd Blanche is there. And what happened is now with this reporting is during and we can put that picture up during that Zoom hearing when Donald Trump heard the date, he clicked off his microphone and he said to Todd Blanche that um if I lose the, that he said when he heard the date, that is in the middle of the primaries. If I lose the presidency, it's going to be, that's the reason. You're the reason if I lose the primary. And then he goes back, you know, with his face watching watching the uh, the rest of the proceedings. And at the time, it was reported this way, for instance, just to give you what we've now learned. Uh, back in... Um, AP reported this on uh, about six months ago when this wall went down. President Trump threw up his hands in frustration Tuesday as a judge scheduled his criminal trial for March 25, putting the former president and current candidate in a Manhattan courtroom in the heat of next year's primary season. Okay, <laughs> now we know what he really did in yelling at uh, Blanche. But the yelling at Blanche and ripping him a new one got worse. And let me tell you what that's all about. As AP reported it, Trump appearing by video conference at a pretrial hearing in the hush money case glowered at the camera as Judge Juan Manuel Mershon advised him to cancel all other obligations for the duration of the trial, which could last several weeks. Trump wearing a blue suit against the backdrop of American flags at his Florida estate, Mar-a-Lago, then turned to a lawyer by his side. This is Todd Blanche. Their brief discussion in audible on the video feed before sitting with his arms folded for the remainder of the hearing. Well, we now what the we now know what the inaudible conversation was. It was that's in the middle of the primary season. If I lose the presidency, you are to blame, Blanche. But it gets better. Hearing over, date set, cameras off, no hot mic moment, but Jonathan Carl reports that Donald Trump then spends the next half hour lashing out at 
Todd Blanche in his office in his face for a good 30 minutes saying, and I hide the kids for this one, folks. I'm just repeating the reporting. You little... Sorry, I'll have to beep that. You little effer. Uh, you just cost me the presidency. Now think about that for a few minutes. First of all, nobody's... There's no line of lawyers wrapped around the block who want to represent Donald Trump. There's no major law firms that want to touch this with a 10-foot pole. That's why he's left, as we've said frequently on Legal AF and on and on uh, um, this network, on Midas Touch Network. We frequently said that the Jack Smith is just busy trying to exhaust the resources and the actual lawyers for Donald Trump. He's only got five of them, and they're in seven different cases over nine months. Uh, and so he and Todd Blanche is one. Chris Keis is another. Alina Haba just does her best work in the parking lot, mainly uh, giving lectures and speeches to people, but doing nothing really in the courtroom other than yelling at law clerks and judges. Uh, and that's really it. And each one of those two guys have a couple of associates, and that's the entire that's the entire thing. I mean, against you know thousands of people, cast of thousands for the Department of Justice, and so. To lose Todd Blanche would be a bad thing. I mean, he's had some terrible... Donald Trump's had... I don't know how to put this mildly. or how, I don't want to put this mildly. He's had some terrible lawyers working for him. Many of them have either lost their law license or are now convicted criminals or both, uh, including in Georgia. And, you know, we could we could spend an entire... Another hot take on the list, right? Jenna Ellis, Sidney Powell, Rudy Giuliani, Ray Smith... Jim Troupas, Boris Epstein is a lawyer. Uh, you know, he's radioactive. You want to lose your ticket to lose your bar license? Work for Donald Trump. So if I were him, I would not be screaming at Todd Blanche, one of the only credible lawyers you have on your team, uh, about the developments in the courtroom 3,000 miles away that set your trial date in March. But yeah, that's Donald Trump. And so... You know, I've always thought that that Blanche was a little bit in the back and not doing the lead. For instance, Donald Trump, I believe, lost confidence in Blanche and therefore brought in John Lauro, L-A-U-R-O, a lawyer from Tampa, Florida, who's been taking the lead in the D.C. election interference case. So he's taking the lead in the D.C. election interference case, the four-count criminal conspiracy case brought by Jack Smith, the special counsel, Department of Justice against Donald Trump, only in front of Judge Chutkin. That's his role. Chris Keis is up doing battle with, I guess, Alina Haba tied behind his back in New York in the civil fraud case looking to take away in that amazing justice game of Monopoly all of Donald Trump's houses buildings, hotels, <laughs> and money, and business reputation, and ability to conduct business in the future. So where is Blanche? For a long time, we used to say, where's Chris Keis? Chris Keis, is, it has, Chris Keis was given a major role in New York in the fraud case. This one, Lauro, major role, D.C. election case. That leaves, I guess, Todd Blanche for Mar-a-Lago. But even Mar-a-Lago, Donald Trump wanted Chris Keis to come into the last hearing in front of Judge Aileen Cannon as if as if Todd Blanche needed training wheels or a supervisor. So it now explains in the universe of Donald Trump, the orbit, who who's ascending and who is descending in those orbits. And, and it's Todd Blanche is obviously descended. And Chris Keis has ascended, and John Loro has ascended, and Alina Haba never seems to have moved. She's still the the one that he he loves the most of all his lawyer children, I guess. So now it now, but now it makes sense. You know, when we were piecing together, like what's where is Todd Blanche these days, and why isn't he signing the briefs that are being filed with the election interference case, and why isn't he using his credibility and and doing very little in the case? Now we know why. I mean, Donald Trump blames him for putting the trial of the Stormy Daniels hush money books and records fraud case right in the middle of the primary season. I, who does Donald Trump, I guess, blame? It's weird, though. He doesn't seem to blame John Loro for the fact that uh, 
Chutkin, Judge Chutkin took March also for her election interference case. But I think once you're in the doghouse with Donald Trump, it's very difficult to get out of. Why you'd want to be with Donald Trump, let alone in his doghouse, that is for another hot take and an entire year or more of Legal AF, the leading podcast of law and politics right here on the Midas Touch Network. But this is reporting that we're getting on uh, from Jonathan Carl, really reliable investigative reporter about the fallout between Donald Trump and Todd uh, Blanche, as that case still hovers around Donald Trump, that Stormy Daniels case, because it's still technically on the docket for March the 24th of 2024, even though everybody expects, and we've done prior reporting and prior analysis, that we're, we're confident that there was a phone call between Judge Chutkin, the federal judge, and the state judge, Judge Rashawn, because it was reported by courtroom personnel that that phone call took place, which is completely ethical under the judicial canons of ethics to make that phone call to coordinate the various trials involving Donald Trump. And that Judge Bershon reportedly said, you can have my March date. Now, if something happens with the March date for Judge Chutkin, like the Supreme Court or some other appellate court stays the March trial on some grounds that we haven't yet addressed, you know, Stormy Daniels, I think, is going forward in March. So it's 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 a backup case, as we like to say in the law. There's a lot of backup cases. Fawny Willis, Fulton County District Attorney, in her case against Donald Trump and others. It's also a backup case if something happens with Judge Chutkin. So Trump is, is probably triple booked for March, right? And uh, we'll have to keep an eye on who's really, you know, if if Blanche ever gets out of the doghouse and has a more substantive or meaningful role as these cases go to trial, we'll follow it right here on the Midas Touch Network exclusively on Legal AF, the leading podcast at the intersection of law and politics. It happens one time, I'm sorry, two times a week. Sorry, I'm coming off a cold, a little bit of a cold medicine hangover. Uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Wednesdays, I do it with Karen Friedman, Ignifolo, former prosecutor, and on Saturdays with a fellow defense lawyer and f- founder of the Midas Touch Network, Ben Mycellus. We pull it all together, hot takes like this one, where we debate the issues of the day at the intersection of law, politics, and justice, and then put it on audio platforms wherever you can get it. So until my next hot take, give me a thumbs up if you like this content. Until my next podcast, Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.